Welcome everyone, I am Talk Custom, and on this video we're gonna show you how to do some absolute beginner level basic stitch techniques to help you guys get started with your projects. Now, I've already done a few videos on how to set up and thread a sewing machine, so this is gonna be all about different types of stitches and seams to help you guys accomplish your goals. All right, so I'm all set up at my machine here, and I made a list of eight different types of stitches and seams for absolute beginners to help you guys get started. So I'm gonna be using my brother ST150 HDH. Most of my videos are set up for absolute beginners, so I wanted to point out a couple of basics real quick before we get started. The first thing I wanna point out is our seam allowance plates. So uh, depending on your pattern, it should tell you what kind of seam allowance you have. And in this demo, we're gonna be doing a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance for all of our seams. Uh, this is half an inch right here. So basically you just line up your fabric with those dashes and that's how you get your seam allowance. I get a lot of comments from people saying that their top thread comes out of their needle quite often or you get a bird's nest of uh, thread as you do your first few stitches. So I wanted to show you guys how to fix that so that doesn't happen. The most important thing to keep those two things from happening are to make sure you've got a nice long thread tail. So I usually make sure I've got about five inches of thread coming out the back and then I put it to the back. The other thing that's really important when you're starting any seam is that you start your first stitch on the fabric. So if I lower my presser foot and I lower the needle, I can see that I'm about half an inch into the fabric right there. If you start off the fabric, there's a good chance you're gonna get that bird nest of thread. Anyway, so we're all set up to do our first type of seam, which is just called a straight stitch. So I've got this on my 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna do two stitches forward, and then I'm gonna do my back stitch, which we talked about in some of my other videos. And I'm gonna back stitch right up to the edge of the fabric without going off, then I'm gonna go forward. Now, I'm just gonna take out my pin and I'm gonna stitch all the way to the other end of this fabric, pull out my pins, and as I get to the other end, I'm gonna do a back stitch, and then run all the way off. I'm gonna raise my needle, lift my foot, and then I'm gonna pull out five inches or so of thread and cut my thread tail nice and long so that my next stitch will not get all jammed up. Now, we've done our first type of stitch, so this is just called a straight stitch. If I open this up, I should have a nice clean seam. I haven't even pressed this yet, but this looks just fine. Now, every type of stitch that we're gonna show you in this video is gonna start with that basic straight stitch at a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, and there's some variations that we're gonna show you along the way. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do my straight stitch on all of my sample pieces real quick, and then I will show you the difference between each variation as we get to them. Now it's a really good habit every time you do a stitch to press your steams and you're gonna heat set those stitches into place and that's gonna help it lay nice and flat. Now what I wanna do for my first five different types of seams is I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna press the seam to one side. It doesn't matter which side right now, but I'm just gonna press five of these different test samples to the right so that my seam is laying flat to the right side like that. So now that we pressed all of the ones that we need to for right now, we've got our straight stitch done, so that is the most basic type of stitch we can do, and now we're going to talk about top stitching. By default, most machines are at 2.5 millimeters of stitch length. When I'm top stitching, I like to do about three or maybe three and a half, sometimes four depending on the project, but I'll do three and a half for this demo. Makes the stitches a little bit longer, so they're a little bit more noticeable. People also ask me a lot, when I switch different colors for top thread, do I switch my bobbin thread? And I do not. Now, when I do top stitching on my projects, I like to do it in a different color. So I'm going to use a nice deep red color here uh, as our top stitch. Alright, so now I'm going to line up this edge of our seam with the right side of my presser foot here. It might be kind of hard to see it because it's so bright, but uh, my edge is perfectly flush with this right edge of my presser foot. And I do that for a lot of my different top stitches. Now I'm gonna start the same way where I'm gonna do a couple of stitches and then back stitch up to the edge of the fabric. And then I'm just gonna follow this edge all the way down. And again, make sure you pull plenty of extra thread out so that you've got a nice smooth stitch on your next one. 
All right, so as you can see, we've got a nice smooth top stitch on the outside, and this also helps to strengthen the entire seam on the back side. So here was our original stitch, and then here's the bobbin thread on our top stitch right here. So it will actually add a lot of strength. All right, the next type of stitch we're gonna do is called an edge stitch. So there is our seam, and I'm gonna line this up. Instead of lining it up with the right side of my presser foot, I'm gonna put the seam right in the absolute center so that my needle is gonna go about an eighth of an inch to the left of where my seam is there. Now it might be kind of hard to see it because it's so bright, but as I cast a shadow, I can see there's my seam and then my needle is about an eighth of an inch to the left of that. So I'm gonna do the same thing that we just did. It's almost exactly the same as a top stitch. Now this is how our edge stitch looks and the difference between that and our original top stitch is about that much of a gap. Uh, now there's one more thing we can do, which is called a welt stitch, or as I call it, a double top stitch, where I'm going to line up this edge stitch we just did with the right side of our presser foot like we did on the first one. And I'm gonna do the same thing next to it. And this is called a welt stitch. Now you should have something that looks like this, and I do this a lot on like men's jeans and stuff like that, on the back pockets and sometimes on the inseam. The other good thing about this, if I look at the inside of the seam, is you can tell there are three seams there. So there's our original seam and then both of our top stitch. So this adds a ton of strength to your seams. All right, so so far we have our straight stitch, our top stitch, our edge stitch, and our welt stitch. So we've got four different types of stitches right there. The next type of stitch I'm gonna show you is the triple top stitch. So we've been doing number one here, which is just a regular straight stitch, but I love doing this triple wide top stitch for all of my top stitching on jeans. It also adds stretch, so you can use it on knits and woven fabrics too. So I'm gonna change my machine to setting number three, because that is our triple stitch. Now the way this works is it's gonna go two stitches forward and then one stitch back, and then it's gonna go two forward, one back. So it's essentially stitching over the same area three times every stitch. Uh, so it's a little bit slower, but it looks really good. Okay, so here's our triple top stitch, which looks really good. And just to show the difference between that and our original top stitch, you can see how much more bold this stitch is here than this one here. I also forgot to modify the stitch length so it was a little bit longer. So I'm gonna do another edge stitch here with a little bit longer of a triple stitch so you can see the difference there. Now I just set my stitch length to four millimeters instead of the original 2.5. All right, so we've got our shorter stitch uh, that we first did, and then this is our longer stitch. I prefer the longer stitch, but you guys can do whatever you like more. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to do what I guess I'd call a folded edge stitch. So I've got my seam pressed to the left, so I'm gonna fold this over like that. And what I'm gonna try to do is match up my seam so it's completely on our folded edge like that. So as I folded that in half, I just want you to see that the seam is right there on the edge and we're gonna press that down so it's perfectly flat. Now that that's pressed, I can see that uh, our seam is perfectly creased right on that fold line right there and this is gonna be a nice clean surface for us to do an edge stitch or a top stitch right there. To get set up for our folded edge stitch, uh, I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna move it all the way to the right side. Most machines can do that. Uh, and now my needle is all the way on the right and I'm gonna line up the edge of my fabric with the right edge of my presser foot. Uh, I'm gonna keep doing the triple top stitch at a four millimeter length and then I'm just going to stitch all the way along that edge. All right, so now you should have something that looks like this, and I do this a lot with uh, dress shirts, collars, men's jeans, costumes, uh, messenger bags, all kinds of stuff like that. So having that edge stitch is really nice. You can see my center seam is right on that edge there, which is great, and then our bobbin thread is black on the backside.
All right, now I'm gonna show you how to do an open top stitch. I don't know if that's what this is actually called. I just kind of make up my own names. But in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna open my seam down the middle and I'm gonna press my seam open, okay? So I've got my seam split right down the middle. Now our seam is pressed open, so you should see the center seam in the middle and then you should have your uh, raw edges on either side. Now my needle is positioned on the left side here. So what I wanna do is line up my seam with the left side of my presser foot like that. Uh, I'm going to lower the presser foot, do a couple of stitches and a back stitch. I'm gonna set my machine so that it is a four millimeter stitch length. And then I am just going to stitch all the way down, keeping this left edge of my presser foot parallel with that center seam. Okay, so we have the right side of our seam uh, top stitch that way. So now all I'm gonna do is just flip our fabric over and I'm gonna line up uh, the left edge of our presser foot like we just did with the center of the seam, not the stitches, but with the center of the seam that we have in the middle there. So as I do this, it's gonna be perfectly even with the other side. We're going to stitch all the way down. All right, so that's how our open top stitch would look. Uh, I love the way that this looks. The only issue with this is that it's the weakest of all the top stitches because there's nothing really holding that seam together other than the center stitch. One thing you can do is you can add a strip of fabric to the back before you do this so that it actually grabs onto something to make it a little bit stronger. Um, but it does look really good on the outside like that. So something I need to point out is that every seam we've done so far has raw fabric on the inside of your seam. So this can all fray if it's woven fabric. So that can fray. Uh, this was our uh, open double top stitch. So these edges here can fray, which is not good. The only exception so far is our uh, rolled edge stitch because the seam is on the inside, so that cannot fray. Now, if you absolutely hate frayed threads on the inside of your seams, or you're planning on starting to sell stuff, uh, you're probably gonna need to get an overlock machine or a serger like this one. Uh, but basically, I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail. The way this works is it's gonna trim the edge of my seam here. And while it's trimming that, it's going to loop fabric over that raw edge of seam. Now when it's done, it's gonna look something like that. So I've got my original straight stitch that we did, and then this whole seam here on the inside is overlocked, so that's never gonna fray, and it's gonna look nice and clean on the inside. Now the cool thing about a serger is that I've got a nice clean seam on the inside, uh, and then I press this over to the right, so what I can do is the same technique we did before, where I can do another top stitch or an edge stitch to hold that in place. So as you can see, we have our nice triple top stitch on the outside, and then as I flip this, uh, we've got a nice serge seam on the inside. And because the bobbin thread from our top stitch is there, it's gonna hold that serge seam in place, so I can't even flip this over anymore. That is completely locked down on the inside and on the outside. The last seam I'm gonna show you is what's called a flat felled seam. Uh, I've only done this a few times and I might not be very good at it, but I do understand the principle. So first I'm gonna press my seam over to one side. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of pull these apart and I'm gonna open this up. I'm not gonna press it, but I'm just gonna open that up. Now on the right side of that inside seam, I'm gonna trim that about halfway towards the center of the seam. Now I'm just gonna remove that scrap. Okay, so now you can see that the left side of the seam is a little bit longer than the right side. So what I wanna do is I'm going to fold over the longer part of the seam so that it's covering the shorter side. So now the shorter side is tucked in to that other side, so I'm gonna iron this in place. And now I'm gonna flip all of this stuff over to the right side and try to keep this as flat as I can. 
I'm going to pull the fabric nice and tight just to make sure that it's not puckering on the outside. And now I'm just going to press the whole thing down to the right side, just like this. All right, now we're just going to take this over to our machine and we're going to edge stitch as close as we can to the inside here. And this is the inside of our fabric. The outside is going to end up looking like that. Um, but what we're trying to do is hide any raw edges on the inside of that flat felled seam. All right, now don't forget, we're going to be stitching on the inside of our seam. So using a top stitch thread is not really important or helpful at all. So I'm going to switch back to uh, just some standard uh, black thread for this. All right, so now that we're all set up, I've got my needle in the middle here, and we're just going to be stitching as close as we can to the edge of that uh, pressed edge of fabric right there. All right, that actually went really well. I'm pretty happy with that. So the bottom is our original seam, and then we've got the bobbin thread from our flat felled stitch there. Now, if we look at the inside of our seam, we've got our nice two straight rows of stitching there, and there is no raw fabric there, so you're not going to get any frayed thread or anything like that. The other benefit to this is it's a very strong seam, so this will hold up for a long time. As a bonus technique, I'm going to attempt to do my first ever French seam. Um, so, so far we've been doing right sides together for every single seam we've done. Now, the way a French seam works is you want to put wrong sides together, which is very unusual for me. So, I've got wrong sides together now. Now, I'm going to stitch this at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now that we have our first seam done, uh, what we want to do is press our seam open, kind of like we did on our open top stitch earlier, except uh, in this case, our fabric is backwards. Okay, so for this part, you're going to need some really sharp precision snips. And uh, we're going to trim each side of the seam down to about one eighth of an inch, extremely close to that first seam that we did. All right, so now we're going to do the other side the same way. And from what I understand, this is a technique people do a lot with silks and like bridal fabrics and stuff like that. So there's a very good chance I'll never use this technique with uh, menswear, which is normally what I do. But this is still a good technique to learn. So now the inside of your seam should look something like that, just trimmed extremely close. Uh, to the inside seam there. Now the rest of this should be pretty easy, just like we did with our uh, folded edge stitch. So we're going to do the same thing where we fold this so that that center seam is just right on the edge like we did before. And I'm going to kind of roll this between my fingers so that it is perfectly in the center. And then we're going to press that into shape. Okay, so I just want to take a closer look before we proceed, but it looks like that edge of that seam is right on the edge there, which is perfect. Now, we trimmed the inside of the seam to about an eighth of an inch, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just a straight stitch seam here at about a quarter inch seam allowance, and then that's it, and then we're done. All right, now I'm going to line up. This is our folded and pressed edge that we just did, and I'm going to line this up with my quarter inch seam allowance right here. Start with a back stitch and just go all the way down. All right, so there's the inside of our seam, which looks fine. And if I open this up, uh, this is how the outside of our French seam looks. And I almost pattern matched that pretty well, but there is our seam right there. But this actually looks really good. And we don't have to top stitch this at all. Uh, because the inside is pressed over to the right and uh, there's no frayed threads or any raw edges or anything like that. So uh, my first attempt at a French seam went pretty well. Okay, so I think that's going to do it for all of our different types of stitches. I didn't actually know I knew how to do that many types. 
But we had our straight stitch, top stitch, edge stitch, welt stitch, triple stitch, folded triple stitch, open top stitch, overlock surge top stitch, flat felt seam, and French seam. So that was, I think, 10 different types of seams that we can do. Uh, and I use a lot of those in a lot of my different projects. If you have any questions about anything that we did in this video, please let me know in the comments. Uh, and I hope some of the early stuff helped you guys that are new uh, get some smooth stitches to start off with. Again, if you have any other questions or any other videos you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I really hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.